up a bit. There we go. I think it's that. It's so hard to tell. There is a chameleon. Go up a little bit more. It's climbing its way to the top of the tree now. I'm just trying to see where I can get a view. But it is so camouflaged. I can see its tail. Um, now I'm trying to figure out how to do this because I can't go, it's the green thing. Because <laughs> the entire tree is green. Craig, let me go forward. And then I'll, we can look, you can look back onto it. Oh, sorry, chameleon. Touched your tree by accident. There it is. Can you see? There we go. We'll look back at it. But it's in there. There it is. In amongst the quarries. How cool is that? Craig actually spotted this one, so all credit goes to him. Isn't that beautiful? So even though the weather is starting to get cooler, we still will see chameleons. Luckily, it doesn't get too cold, so they don't completely disappear. I'll just move into areas where the vegetation is just slightly thicker and they can conceal themselves. They don't like to sit out on open sticks without any form of leaves. Otherwise, they're completely exposed. And a silhouetted chameleon would be a nice, well, nice delicious treat for one of the nocturnal species of birds to catch. But it is looking around. I think it's trying to find a spot to rest for the evening. But it is so windy. Look at that. It's going to blow off of its perch if it's not careful. So you better choose your stick wisely, my friend. But it has, of course, got its tail, its prehensile tail, which it can curl around and act as an extra appendage, which it's doing now. And I think, if anything, it needs that safety line on a windy day like today. But hopefully, well, hopefully for this chameleon, the wind will die down a little bit later and then it can resume its normal perch right on the edge of a stick. Lorena, you said it looks like a very big chameleon. No, it's actually not. The flap-necked chameleons aren't particularly large. This one doesn't look too big either. It's not the biggest one we've seen. I don't know if I'll be able to reach up where it is. It's quite high in this quarry tree. So I would say it's a medium-sized flap-necked chameleon. I just wanted to get such a cool view. What we were hoping to do was trying to get a silhouette of the chameleon, but it just wouldn't cooperate. It was moving around in and amongst the trees. And I had actually just switched my lights on, can you believe it? And then that sort of white reflection that you get off of a chameleon, Craig spotted that. I didn't even see it. And then he said, there's one. And then at one point, because it was moving around, we had the, the awesome silhouette. I don't think anyone has ever seen a silhouetted chameleon before. It was so beautiful against the skyline. But then it was moving higher and higher in the tree. And now it's sitting in the middle of the thicket. So it's very difficult to, of course, try and get that look. Hello, William who's only eight years old and all the way from Oregon. It's great to hear from you again. Now, William, your question was, can chameleons make noises? The flap neck chameleon, I haven't really heard them make any noises. Sometimes when they sort of blow themselves up and they open their mouths when they get upset, they almost make a slight hissing sound. But other than that, I've never heard a chameleon make a noise. I wouldn't be surprised though if something were to snatch them up if they'd make a distress call. But I've never heard one. Maybe some of the other chameleon species, like the, the larger chameleon species that you maybe find in Madagascar, maybe will make a noise, but I'm not 100% certain. I actually don't know too much about their vocalizations. And I think if there are any, they'll be very, very limited, maybe just to hissing and sort of sounds like that. Craig, should we see if we can get another angle? I don't think we will, actually. I was really hoping it was going to be nice. Me put, I can put the spotlight on for you if you want to have another look. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit of light on it. <laughs> Exquisite bliss, you say that you'd like to be a chameleon so that you could jump out and scare people. That would be quite terrifying. Imagine driving down a road and just sitting on a branch and then leaping into the face of a guide. I would scream. I'd have a nervous breakdown. I think I'd probably crash the car if a chameleon did that to me. That's actually very pretty now. I've just added a little bit of the spotlight to it. I know chameleons don't always enjoy the spotlight. Some don't mind it. Others seem to have a bad attitude about, about it. This one seems to be okay for now. But how cool was that? That was, that was an amazing sighting. Still looking around. Looks slightly petrified, don't you think? Like, oh my goodness, my camouflage is not working. I've been spotted. Abort, abort. <laughs> but obviously they're not particularly quick. Well, actually, I say this, and I've had a chameleon completely disappear on the ground because it moved.
move too fast for me to keep up. But in the trees, it's a little bit more difficult, especially on a windy day, to be able to hold on tight. I just love their little feet. Isn't this beautiful? And there's lots of babblers and things. You can probably hear them making quite a bit of noise too. Pilas, who is only 13 years old and all the way from New York, you're wondering if chameleons hibernate. So it's quite interesting. The reptiles here in this particular area of South Africa don't hibernate at all. It doesn't get cold enough for them to go into a permanent state of hibernation. So we call it estivation. So they'll, they'll go into these periods um, of time where they won't do anything, they become slightly dormant, but as soon as the weather warms up again, then they'll carry about as if it was summer. So chameleons don't hibernate, we just don't see them as often, we're actually chatting about it with Craig, it's not like they, they bury themselves underneath the ground or completely disappear, they just move to spots that have a lot of vegetation around. Like I said, a chameleon relies on having leaves on a tree, if it was just on the stick on a bear tree it would be spotted quite easily and lots of different things would find a chameleon delicious to eat so it'll just move around into sort of thicker areas so it might go onto something like a peltiforum an african wattle which doesn't lose its leaves you know just try and find the evergreen trees but how cool was that but i think we'll leave this chameleon though i don't want to spot it too much with the light there we go